I'm getting ready to go back to Suriname. The reason I'm going there, yeah, I like the people, I like the country, but I really like the fish. There's a critter there called a wolf fish that is, I believe, the greatest unknown game fish in the whole world. And he is famous for absolutely destroying lures, all of the hollow plastic lures that we use for muskies and all that kind of stuff last about like one wolf fish and they sink. So in the past I've built some lures for them, uh, big, or not big, but popping lures out of a alumilite plastic. And I've got one I call a ricochet, it was made on this mold, it's made to make a big pop and to kind of ricochet between the mocha mocha trees and skip underneath limbs and stuff. And it's worked well out of super plastic but it's a little bit too heavy so we're trying to figure out a foam that's indestructible. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna pour a couple of these ricochet baits out of foam. I've made a kind of a Zara spook. And this has got actually a straw running through it, so I'm gonna run the line through it and there'll be just a hook hanging out and it'll come, it'll detach from the lure. Makes it a little safer on hooking these things. And then I'm also gonna make some heads. Hopper heads are usually made out of a cork or you could use deer hair too. But in, uh, in uh, real warm weather, real warm water, deer hair uh, gets soggy. And I'm afraid this cork just won't hold up. So I've made some, uh, mixed up some putty here. And I've got some basic head shapes like I would use for pike or bass. I've got a uh, slider head shape. This is just a brass tube with a little kind of sculpy clay I rounded off. I'm just gonna go and make that mold. And I'm also gonna take this, this is a piece of cork, popping cork. I flattened out the bottom of it. I'll make a mold out of that and I'll make a diver mold too. And I don't wanna have to go to the trouble of painting these so I'm gonna just dust them with a little bit of Aluma dust. Show you something cool with this in a minute. I've got just just a straw, and if there are slots in this thing here, yeah, you can see I have the slots. Now this bait I'm designing to kind of almost sit in place. I want it to zigzag back and forth, almost in place. And in order to do that, it needs to be heavier in the rear than in the front. What I'm going to do? Pour up some just regular old uh, super plastic. This stuff is heavier than water, so all I'm going to do is take maybe. Nine grams. There we go. I could dye this if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna let it be, let it be white. What I'm going to do is pour this so that there we go. So it all goes to the rear. I'm going to just prop it up a little bit. You can see the super plastic begin to turn opaque when it begins to set up, which is eh, roughly six minutes. And I could let it sit overnight and, and then pour my foam if I wanted to, or you could do it right away. It bonds very, very well. What's the foam? I'll show you. Well, this is a special foam that should expand between two and four times its original volume. And this stuff is you, you can hit it with a hammer and not break it. But you need to be kind of like quick with a bunny with this stuff. This, when this stuff starts to set up, it goes really, really quickly. See my foam? Is it starting to foam? Oh yeah, it's getting hot. Whoa, it's starting to foam already. And it's amazing how... I'll just touch this with my finger. Watch this. This has just popped out of here. Look at it. It's already you know, fairly hard. I'm going to set this aside. And I'll show you the technique that I'm going to use to pour these poppers. Here's one of the, the molds that I made out of uh, putty. I've got a hump shanked hook here, and this might be a little bit light, so I'll make some out of heavier hooks too. But anyway, I'm going to put that in the slot. Let's put this down here like so. And this is just absurdly, absurdly simple. Now this, this mold, as you can see, doesn't have a, a way to stop the, the stuff from bubbling out of it. 
So what I'm going to do, I know that this stuff expands at about two to one, so I'll pour the mold about half full, and then I'll uh, just kind of watch it. And if I have to, I'll put a little flap on top. I'll show you what I mean. There we go, I poured it about half full, and we'll see what happens. I don't know if this is gonna foam up enough or not, I guess. Maybe should have poured a little. No, is it gonna do it? It's looking pretty good, just so it covers up the hook. Looks like it's gonna work out real well. When they uh, when they pop out of the mold, they're gonna kind of look like uh, look like this. This I put a little bit of yellow dye in it. When they pop out, they'll look like this. Just as hard as as hard as nails, and I can make them any shape. So I made a little bit bigger and obviously I'll have to put this on my disc sander or belt sander and buzz off the bottom a little bit. But they sh shouldn't require any coating or anything. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, there's one cool thing I have to show you. Totally unrelated to what I'm doing now, but it's something I just discovered. It's got to do with coloring soft plastics. Lots of people have written to the website saying, how do you paint soft plastics? Check this out. This is just a straight piece of soft, white soft plastic. Now typically the way that you uh, paint this stuff is with a super volatile paint and an airbrush and it is really a pain. Here's what I've just discovered. I can take our Aluma dust, dust here, and if I take this white Mr. This is just white plastic Mr. Wiggly, and I'm just gonna take this powder Go like this. Then I'll take another little bit of powder and go like this. It's just a black erasable. And then the last step, take your heat gun and all I have to do to set this dust on any soft plastic, all I have to do is gently run this heat gun over it when it gets up to temperature, it doesn't take too long. And you'll know when it's set, you'll see it get just a little slick shininess to it. Or you might actually see it smoke just the tiniest bit. And there we go. As soon as that cools down, that stuff is going to be locked on there. Clean as can be, no muss, no fuss, no fumes. Quick, simple. And if I was a real artist and want to go to th through some details, I've got like 40 colors here that I could I could apply. It's called a Luma Dust. You can get it at makelure.com.